um, thank you for the talk and uh, for all the work you do with the Ayn Rand Institute. Um, this is more of a practical question. Um, we saw classical liberalism and the ideas of the Enlightenment ever so slowly uh, degrading in from ideas of negative freedom into positive freedom. Um, I think this can be summed up quite well in a quote um, from Milton Friedman, where, to paraphrase, he says something like, um, libertarianism doesn't have a PR department, but governments do. Right? Doesn't they, have a what? A PR. A PR, yes. Public relations. Yeah. Um, uh, and so how, and I, I asked this question uh, of an MP of ours, Sir Christopher Chope, um, how do we make freedom sexy and stop it from <laughs> uh, declining into a more positive um, idea of so-called freedom that, that is uh, actually just collectivism under a, a different banner? My guess is he gave you a lame answer. Um, <laughs> Because what do politicians know? Um, freedom depends on philosophical premises. Freedom requires that at least those of us who advocate for it, who are going to go out and market it and make it sexy, have a deep understanding of the philosophical foundations of freedom. And I know libertarians don't like hearing this, certainly conservatives don't. Um, you need Ayn Rand. You need a philosophy. You need a metaphysics and epistemology and an ethics. You need grounding. You come across as, we love freedom, we want to take our drugs. That's what you come across. I mean, that's what libertarians come across, particularly in the US, right? Um, and even if you don't want to take your drugs, right? I mean, it's, that's what it comes across as. You need to have an intellectual, philosophical argument. The attack on you is not random. It is from Plato. It's not a second-rate guy. It's like a first-rate guy. The attack against individualism and capitalism and freedom is from Plato. It's from Immanuel Kant. It's from Hegel and Schopenhauer and Marx and Nietzsche even. And these are big shots. And you have maybe Locke. Hume, who's a skeptic, so, you know, it's freedom and skepticism, I'm not sure, go together. Adam Smith, who basically said, yeah, we all practice our self-interest, but we don't really like self-interest, but, so the, but there's an invisible hand that makes the self-interest all be good again, because society's better off, so he falls onto collectivism in the end. You don't have intellectuals. You don't have, you know, the firepower to win. And you got to have Ayn Rand. Ayn Rand is the only one you have. And yet, the sad tragedy of libertarianism and, and people who advocate for free markets is that they rejected Ayn Rand. Uh, I mean, Im imagine a world in which Hayek actually respects Ayn Rand, doesn't have to agree with her, but just respects her and engages in, in, a, in a dialogue and promotes her as a philosopher, right? And, imagine a world in, me, in which von Mises, the, I think the greatest economist who ever lived, says, look, I'm a great economist, but I'm not a philosopher. Rand, you, for the philosophy, go to who? No, he has to have proxology and all this nonsense and try to, and try to be a philosopher instead of sticking to what he's really, really good at, which is economics. Same with Hayek, by the way. Great economist, just middle-of-the-road social thinker. He's just not that exceptional when it comes to his social thinking. He's fairly conventional. Um, so to make it sexy, and, and think about within the libertarian world, the free market world, who makes it sexy? Who brings people to these ideas more than anybody else? Who's more sexy than Dagny Taggart? <laughs> Or Howard Rourke, if you're, you know. <laughs> that, you know, so you need art, you need aesthetics, you need philosophy. And we definitely need aesthetics and art. You need to be able to convey the ideas in a variety of different formats, but you need for that a philosophical grounding. You know, the problem, how can libertarians defend good art when they're, the, the, the two, they're subjectivists in too many areas in their life, including art? Well, anything goes. No, some art is good, some art is lousy, and some stuff that we consider art is not even art at all, right? But you need standards, and where are you going to get those standards? Not from your emotions, from your reason. You need a philosophy. So what we need is to embrace a real philosophy, and I think Ayn Rand is it. Thank you for listening or watching The Iran Brook Show. If you'd like to support the show, we make it as easy as possible for you to trade with me. You get value from listening. You get value from watching. 
show your appreciation. You can do that by going to yourronbookshow.com slash support, by going to Patreon, subscribe star, locals, and just making a appropriate contribution uh, on any one of those uh, any one of those channels. Also, if you'd like to see the Iran Book Show grow, please consider sharing our content and of course subscribe. Press that little bell button right down there on YouTube so that you get an announcement when we go live. And for you, those of you who are already subscribers and those of you who are already supporters of the show, thank you. I very much appreciate it.